Joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show, the second overall pick of the 2010 NFL Draft, fresh off of an NFC Championship season with the Philadelphia Eagles and Dominic and Sue. Good to see you, sir. How are you? Good to see you as well. It's been great. Fresh off of the NFL Network and NFL Broadcast Boot Camp, where a whole host of current NFL players and former NFL players uh, were learning the the trade of uh, what may be their their next chapter in life. And uh, it, it's it's remarkable, and Dominic, as I was researching for your <laughs> visit here, because I'm a lead pipe wielding professional. Yeah. Um, you, you you were the second overall pick of the 2010 NFL Draft, and I'm I'm just wondering who else is still around from that first round, and Brandon Graham. Yeah. In Linval Joseph was a second round pick, and you played with all three of the guys in yeah. the Super Bowl. That's two, unbelievable. Two great guys, especially BG. Uh, I just got to know Linval that season. Right. I've watched him from afar, especially when he's out here playing for the Chargers. But, I mean, there's not many of us left in that 2010 season. Uh, I think another great is uh, that we actually beat in the NFC Championship was Trent Williams. Uh, so, he, he's, I think in the top five, it's just myself and him. Right. Trent Williams, I saw, I saw Rod, Roger Saffold is still still around. Oh, Jerry yeah. Hughes is yeah. still around. Yeah. Well, and, and so we're sitting here uh, just a few uh, short days before the NFL draft. What was your draft night like in 2010? My draft Dominican. night was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so I got a, actually a phone call from Tampa uh, in the Bucks, and they wanted me to drop down to number three. And I was like, you've got 12 picks. Like, give up some of the picks and come get me. Uh, That's but, what you told them, or you were thinking that? <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's what I told them. I was like, I mean, most likely St. Louis, St. Louis isn't going to take me at the time because they had they needed a need a quarterback, and so they took um, – Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford. And so at that time I was like – most likely not going first, probably going to be second, but you can come up and get me. You have extra picks. I'm sure Detroit may want to do something, mm-hmm. even though I had a good interview with them and they said they wanted to come and get me. But uh, I didn't find out until later after I got picked that um, a guy named Gunther Cunningham, uh, old veteran with oh, Kansas yeah. City, was a great guy. He was like adamantly like, you are a blue chipper. I am not letting you go. I am taking you at two. And uh the rest is history. Well, knowing Gunther, as, as I did get to briefly know him, you, you probably cleaned up that language here for the Rich Eisen show. <laughs> There's no doubt I cleaned up that language. Gunther might, likes might, F-bombs. He might, have, he, might have, uh, he might have said a few other choice words yeah. uh, within there. So that that's why Detroit was just hanging up the phone on, on Tampa yeah. to go get you. No question, because they tried to do it. And like I said, Gunther told me the whole story once. I got there into the city, but I mean, I've always believed everything happens for a reason. Right. And I loved my entire time in Detroit and I still spend time back there. I have a home there, uh, have mentors there. So it's, it's a beautiful city and I love it. Right. And then, um, so it was a short night for you at yeah. least that, 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 that night, uh, who, uh, who was, who was with you that night uh, in the green room? My mother, my father, uh, my older sister and my agents. And then I had a bunch of family and friend. My two best friends from college uh, and one of my best friends from high school, they were all in the stands. And so we got to celebrate afterwards. Uh, and then it was actually back to business because I had a phone call that night. I went out for maybe a couple hours, uh, but Kyle Vandenbosch called me and said, hope you're ready to work. So got up and trained that next morning and got on a flight to Detroit. Look at you in that three piece right there. Look yeah. at you. It was absolutely beautiful. So uh, being there with my mom, my dad, and my sister, uh, and my close family friends was was a great time. So, and um, uh, how, how does a kid from Portland, Oregon, wind up in Nebraska? Uh, it was interesting. So my sister actually played soccer at Mississippi State. Okay. Uh, there was a guy named uh, John Blake that passed away mm-hmm. recently, unfortunately. He used to be the head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, but he was at the time working at Mississippi State. Had a connection uh, there. My sister was like, you should recruit my little brother. Uh, like I don't know who your brother is. Like so, we connected all the dots. He ended up going with Bill Callahan to Nebraska as a D line coach and recruited me my junior senior year. Uh, and so fell in love with his enthusiastic way and how he talks and is a great human being. Uh, but made the decision like I've known Nebraska as a historic program and wanted to be a, bar, be a part of something special. And we had a great class that came in. Right. And uh, I got to play early. So uh, it was it was the best of both worlds. So sold. And so sold. a kid from Portland, Oregon, winds up right in the middle of the, the country. Yeah. I didn't want to stay home because I had Oregon and Oregon State. Uh, but half my high school went to either one of them. Right. I looked at the University of Miami. They didn't really have my engineering degree that I wanted to focus on at that particular time. And that's what I ended up becoming. Uh, and then uh, I looked at the uh, University of Cal. And their program for engineering was 
very good, mm-hmm. but it was very difficult to get into. And I knew I was going to be able to have to balance sports and football. Uh, and even though like Nebraska, the program wasn't seen as hard to get in because I didn't have to take a test to get in. Yes. It was a top five program. So I, fought, I felt like it was the best, best mix between the two. And Dominic and Sue here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, um, fresh off of, again, that uh, that season with the Philadelphia Eagles, came so close to winning the Super Bowl for a second time in your career. You played in three of them. Yeah, three three Super Bowls. One here with L.A. Uh, when they moved over here, and then we unfortunately lost to the Patriots. And I told Tom when we got to Tampa together, mm-hmm. man, you owe me one. So we went and took care of business this first year that he got down there. How does he respond when you say to him, you <laughs> owe me a Super Bowl? I imagine uh, there was there was some choice words yeah. that I'll, I'll keep between us. But yes. uh, I mean, overall, it was just more or less having fun uh, and just interacting with each other from that standpoint. No, no hard feelings because actually I have, still have hard feelings because we played. I believe our defense played an amazing game that year. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, just couldn't put up enough, there was up one, enough points. I know there was just one touchdown scored in that Super Bowl. Yeah. And then um, and then l- let's talk about. The one that just occurred. Yeah. When you see the James Bradbury penalty call, yeah. you think what? I think it's unfortunate. Uh, I would. It's technically a hold. Uh, as a ref, if I was in that position, maybe I'm biased. I don't call that. I let that play go on, especially mm-hmm. seeing that the receiver wasn't even able to get anywhere near it, mm-hmm. uh, and the ball was clearly over his head. But then also from that standpoint. I take that play completely away. We were up by, if I'm not mistaken, a 10 or 15 point lead at mm-hmm. half, and you give up 28 points in the second half as a defense, you don't deserve to win the game. So that's the way you're you're looking at it. Yeah. Do you sit around behind the wheel of a car? Does it ever hit you? Like how close you came this time oh, around? Oh yeah, no question. Uh, but I try not to live in the past. Uh, for whatever reason, like I said before, everything happens for a reason. So right. We'll we'll see what that reason is sometime in the future. It'll it'll, it'll have an epiphany. Where does Jalen Hurts rank amongst teammates for you? I mean, He's up there. Uh, I don't have a specific number for him, but I got a lot of respect for that kid. Why? Uh, Jalen Hurts is one of those guys that just being around him for ten to fifteen weeks. Yeah, it's just a brief time. Brief time. Yeah. Like just seeing him work. And the conversations that we we were able to have centered around some business things uh, that he's looking to do and some stuff that he had some opportunities with, like he is very sharp, very special, and he is a tireless worker. So I got a lot of respect for a guy at that age to have that type of focus and determination. Uh, he's going to be in this league for a long time. Well, I mean, you're 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 uh, an umpteen year veteran here <laughs> in Dominican. So what is he? He's picking your brain on business opportunities. Uh, there was so we have some mutual friends. Uh, Warren Buffett? No, not Warren Buffett. Okay, uh, that that one uh, I, I've been super lucky with. There's not many people that are fortunate enough to have that relationship, so it's a great one. But uh, we were actually talking about some business in and around uh, marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of my passions in life is to be able. To, I've been able to be exposed to a ton of different things in life. Yes, uh, especially because of being an NFL player. And so being able to share some of my experiences and my thoughts of some deals that were on the table table for him yes. um, was kind of our conversation. I'll keep it private because okay. I don't yeah, want sure. him to. Understand. Yeah. But no, I just it, I just find it interesting that he's at this part of his career and he's already thinking about all those other aspects of what can come from his hard work. Yeah. And um, so is there, and I understand what I'm about to ask, but are there any similarities between him and Brady where you see – the way they go about their business or anything, just I would, anything at all. I would say the similarities that I see between the two of them, because they're obviously completely two different players, no doubt. <laughs> but uh, their work ethics and their determination to push other people around them mm-hmm. in a positive manner. Uh, I think that's an, a great leadership trait, and everybody has their particular ways of doing different things. And the one thing I really like about Jalen, maybe because I'm very similar in that aspect of – the way he leads is by example versus by always talking and yelling and doing those two particular pieces where Tom was a little bit more boisterous, uh, which rightfully so. Mm-hmm. And I think that's more of his personality to have those overall conversations to the ultimate group to where Jaden likes to pull guys to the side, have those conversations, but also at the same time can address the entire group. Uh, and has comfortability to do it in, in a very sharp way. And Dominic and Sue here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, let me just jump into your career as a whole. I've been around, obviously, since the beginning to currently right now. So <laughs> yeah. I remember your early years. And 
I always, and I'll ask you point blank, I, I always found it, you know, confusing to me because yeah. meeting you and having this conversation, this is not the first time, but this might be the longest conversation you and I have ever had. Yeah. But you, you're, you're, um, you're cool and collected mm -hmm. and, you know, your, your bright light is on. Yeah. And then you get on a field and it frequently you couldn't, it seemed like control yourself. Yeah. Is that an accurate description or, or, or inaccurate? Well, how I, I would, would you describe it? I would it? call it a biased uh, viewpoint. Okay. And the reason why is because a lot of people haven't taken the time to get to know me. Uh, and if you get to know me, you understand that the way I work and how I am off the field compared to how I'm on the field, mm -hmm. I am focused on the, when I'm between those white lines. And my ultimate goal is to disrupt and create ultimate havoc for an offense. And if I don't have people upset at me, then I'm not doing my job. So you would purposefully maybe play outside the, the rules? I think, I, think, I think being on the edge and being very dominant looks a lot of different ways. And I think because of my talent, the God-given talent of being fast, explosive, and able to hock down a quarterback or running back it looks a lot different compared to what other players do. I can't help that I've been given special talents from my parents and, and my genetics, mm -hmm. and then also build on top of that from the hard work and the different things I do. And I mean, there's plays that you could go back to. It was like, there's no way that you call that. But I guess I had a reputation with refs in the league or whatever it may be yes. to where I want they wanted to, to point it out. And there was actually one particular time when Tim Tebow was in the league uh, a for, fellow first rounder from 2010. Exactly. Uh -huh. Whereas they had him at, on on NFL page as the god and me as a villain. How'd that make you feel? It's it's not true, but that w that's what sells tickets and that's what sell makes makes the league. And to me, the one greatest thing that I learned was to embrace those things. And I learned that actually from Phil Knight, uh, one of the greatest marketers in the world. What did he tell you? Embrace it. Have fun with it. Uh, use it to your advantage and. There's not many people that have your name and likeness based off of what you, you you prove it. And we know who you are as a person and you're not a bad guy. You're actually one of the best guys that I've been able to be around. Very similar to how they created Jordan's uh, prowess and everything that he's been able to accomplish right. in his life. So you wouldn't say during your early years on the field, on the field, mm -hmm. you didn't have a temper issue or anything? Uh, no, not definitely didn't have a temper issue. Wow. Uh, Cause you know, so many people would think, uh, Quite differently, yeah, to be honest. I, I think so, but they also don't know me. They don't. And so in that respect, I think a lot of people might be surprised that you're interested in a world of broadcasting as well Yeah, in Dominican. And you are, for I, sure? I definitely am interested. Like, uh, what do you want to do? What would you uh, like to do? If you could wave a wand and Dominican <laughs> Sue has a gig in, in media, it would be which? Uh, I think ideally I'd be in the studio, uh, being able to break down film, talk about guys, uh, and give my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, and really an educated opinion. I think sometimes we have these talk show hosts that we were talking about earlier, you're yeah. watching your competition, that just blurt out things for, for clicks mm -hmm. and views, uh, where there's never, or not, I won't say never, there's not always a great defensive perspective that's provided. And I'd like to be one of those guys, and I okay. think I'd be very good at it. And um, so you want to try a couple on for size right here? Sure. Okay. Um, what advice would you give Lamar Jackson right now? Uh, having been in his shoes and do, done my own deals, mm -hmm. uh, stay firm. Uh, understand where the market is. Do your research. Uh, be prepared to go into those particular meetings. Uh, and find a way, if, if you want to be with the Ravens, to where it's a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in all business deals – it has to be a win-win, and somebody has to give give up something on both sides uh, to be able to meet in the middle and be successful. The problem is, though, it doesn't look like he can get any meetings right now be, because of w whatever it is. Yeah. Um, the fact that he is franchise tagged and the manner in which he's been franchise tagged, that it would cost another team two first-round picks. And then the word is of how much money he wants. Yeah. And he wants as much money, if not a dollar more, than – Deshaun Watson, he didn't finish the last two years. Yeah. Or do you think, I'll throw it right at you, do you think there's some form of a collusion going on amongst owners in the NFL, in Dominic and Sue? These are the questions yeah, the that question. we'll have to be uh, asked I, I, of you. I, I, I'm On the collusion piece, I'll answer that first. Mm -hmm. I'm unsure. Uh, do owners talk and do they have all that information? They just came from an owner's meeting. Mm -hmm. 
there's no question there's information out there. And so mm -hmm. some teams have already made the decision of how they want a particular move for. Do you call that collusion or do you see that as they just don't see it fit in their plan for how they look at their particular team? Um, and being able to not have all the information, it's tough to say yes. exactly how uh, Lamar should be able to move forward on this particular deal. But when it comes to Deshaun Watson, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. it's always a written rule, even in the draft. The next guy that's up should receive more, if not, uh, if not very similar mm -hmm. to what the guy who the last guy was paid. That's what everybody wants to go and look. Jalen Hurts, he's waiting to see what Lamar is going to get because he's next in line and he wants to exceed that and he wants to reset the market. I can guarantee you that. And Lamar mm -hmm. might be waiting for Hurts, and Hurts mm -hmm. might be waiting for Burrow, who might be waiting for Herbert, who yep. might be waiting for Hurts. Yep. It's just it. It's I I, ex I understand what you're saying. To me, Lamar should be he's not out there enough mm -hmm. i was suggesting on the show that if meek mill is calling robert Kraft mm -hmm. yeah. to say my buddy's interested in playing for your team yeah then he should call up meek mill and say hey um next time let's just say the uh the sixers play the celtics in the in the nba playoffs yeah. which chris as far as i'm as, seems like seems likely okay hey meek when when we're when you're going to the game in Boston, yep. bring me as a plus one, so yep. I'll show up in front of all the Patriots fans. Yeah, that's, and I I don't know if that'll get him his deal, mm -hmm. but you understand as somebody who just told a story about being the villain to, you know, the deity and yep. <laughs> of of Tim Tebow, perception matters a whole heck of a lot when you're trying to get a deal done of some sort. Would you? No, perception definitely okay. does, and I think that's where. Sometimes when you have an agent, they're able to leak certain information mm -hmm. to persuade folks to believe certain things. Yeah. Uh, but I think just truthfully going back to the nuts and bolts of the deal, yes. I think Lamar needs to make a decision, as I did when I was a, a top free agent, yes. and move to Miami. What's going to make you comfortable? And what's going to be best for you and your family? And stick with that. Did you make the most when you did make the I most? Reset when the you, went to my, you reset yeah. the market. You reset the market. Damn straight you did. And Dominic and Sue here on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, so your future is what? Do you want to play more? I don't know yet. Uh, it's got to be, honestly, the right situation. Uh, last year, I waited till the middle of the year, uh, and I had a bunch of phone calls prior to that, whether before the season, right. during the middle of the season. Uh, I mentioned this the other day. Uh, 49ers wanted me to come, uh, and I wanted to actually go to that team because they had one of my favorite defensive line coaches, and I knew the system I was going to get in. It was going to be like riding, riding a bike, right. but it wasn't the right situation at the end of the day from all encompassing. I got two baby boys. Uh, How old are they? Just turned two this couple Sundays ago. So want to spend time with them, but at the same time, uh, trying to figure out that decision of actually worth, if there's going to be a perfect fit for me to be able to find somewhere and I want to win as well. So, I mean, you could, if you want mm -hmm. to do what you just did again. Yeah. Right. For sure. Where you take your time and then around September, October, you go ring hunt. Yeah. I mean, there's but no there's no problem with that. I'll, I'll right? say this. All options are on the table. Okay. What about the Jets? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, what if they get Aaron Rodgers, right? Do you th All right, how about this? Yeah. Do you think the Jets become a Super Bowl team if when, when Aaron Rodgers arrives? In Dominic, when so. Aaron Rodgers and that deal transpires, uh, do I believe they will be a Super Bowl contender? No. Uh, I believe Why that is that? I think Aaron Rodgers is amazing, mm -hmm. and I think he's a, a great quarterback, but there's a lot of things that have to transpire mm -hmm. to be able to become Super Bowl contenders. Uh, and I understand that they have an elite defense, but I'm not sure where their overall offense is right now. Okay. Uh, and just adding one particular piece, it's a little bit different. Uh, I actually had the experience of being able to go through something that is similar in Tampa, Florida with the Bucks. Tom came there. But I was there the year prior, and I was able to see the entire team and what was built on the defense side of the ball and what was built on the offense side of the ball. And now plugging and playing and putting an elite quarterback in that position, it made more sense to be able to reach uh, a particular Super Bowl, in my opinion. And based on our division, that division is very, very difficult. And I don't even think if Aaron Rodgers goes there, will they be the top uh, team in that division? Then that would be which one then, do you yeah. think? Uh, which team would be in, in, in the AFC East? In the AFC East, I mean, you got Buffalo, uh, you got Miami. If Tua stays healthy, 
I mean, they're going to be a huge problem. And then Bill Belichick is Bill Belichick. Uh, he always finds a way to, to win games and be very, very competitive. Mm-hmm. And he's looking to make some big moves himself. Okay. All right. Uh, and Dominican, before I let you go, Chris, ask him to see if he wants to do it. Go ahead. I know what you want him to do right can now. Can we FaceTime Warren Buffett can real we, quick? Can we FaceTime Warren Buffett? <laughs> Just need some stock tips. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's I, a tough I, market I, these days. I, I, we can't FaceTime him. Why? Because, he, because he doesn't have a cell phone. Come uh, on. <laughs> let, let, let alone an iPhone. Wait a so. minute. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> So Warren's just somewhere. Somebody needs Warren. Yeah. What, do he send out a smoke signal? Like he's, uh, you know, what, what do we do? Miss Debbie, who I communicate with more the majority of the time and actually just spoke to her a few days ago. Yes. Um, is how I get a hold of him. Is uh, that his? Uh, that's his secretary. That's his, his secretary. Yeah, his executive assistant. Okay. Uh, and every time I've called him, I've always called the house phone. So. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. So you've got a... Wow. You, You've got the direct landline. I I do. Yes. To Warren Buffett's house. I mean, what do you want to do? You want to order a pizza to his house or something, Chris? I mean, now I I, I think we're out of options. Really, yeah, it doesn't really fit the bit, yeah. so I'm not really sure. Okay. Yeah. Have you been to Warren's house? Have you been to? I have not been to his house, uh, but I've been to his office, and we've spent uh, a good amount of time. He's one of the best human beings to be around. What do you What do you talk about? Uh, we've talked about business, life, uh, just I mean, think of anything. He's like he's like. He's like a father figure when you talk to him. Like it's easy, super easy to talk to, and I mean, it's great advice. I would uh, overall. I'd have to give a little pushback about being super easy to talk to. He doesn't have a phone. <laughs> that sounds yes. a little bit difficult to reach. In, but, uh, in but, person, in I, in person, he's, yes. uh, he's, yeah, he's, I, he's. I'm always. I'm more of an in person type of person when it comes to uh, having those types of conversations. Um, and I, I don't even like being on the phone most of the time. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Uh. You're not a Face, phone guy? FaceTime. Yes, you like that? Love that with my kids, oh, uh, please, especially when I'm on the road. Right. Uh, but I'd much rather interact in person. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so that's how you and Warren are, are alike in that yeah. respect. Yeah. Sorry, Chris. Dang it. <laughs> you didn't think the answer would be, can't do it, Warren Buffett no doesn't have a phone. <laughs> not even a flip phone? By the way, new fantasy team name, Warren Buffett's Burner. Because he's got to have one. <laughs> Give me a break. Okay. Uh, so uh, we don't know uh, if you're going to be playing this fall. We, we do not. Uh, we do not. Um, but uh, we are now in contact face to face. Yes, sir. Hopefully I'm as easy. <laughs> You've been to my house now figuratively here uh, uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Whatever you need, whatever you'd like to do, I'm, I'm, please use me as a resource. Um, and good luck to you on no. that front. I appreciate. It. I will uh, definitely hold you to being a resource. Uh, absolutely. Like I said, uh, I feel like being in this, in, the, in this industry and being able to potentially be a studio analyst uh, of some sort would be it would be absolute pleasure and amazing opportunity. Oh, excellent. And uh, you know, Michigan Nebraska week, we can Facetime each other uh, if you would like to. I'm I mean, not, I'm not sure you're going to be happy. Why? Uh, <laughs> you're, you're a big fan of Matt Rule going there. I am. Uh, being able to talk to him and understand and see his legacy of what he's been able to do at yes. Baylor. Uh, at Temple, like he's. Uh, I know she left off Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fo- f- football, NFL football is a little bit different. It is indeed, yeah. is it so, not? Okay, yeah. I mean, Michigan's coach can can do both, but um, wow. the bottom line is, <laughs> are, are we sure about that? He, well, hey. one guy went to he he took him to the Super Bowl. Took or won. This guy. My man. A ring chaser. <laughs> I like it. Good to see you, Indomitian Sue. You as well. Indomitian Sue right here on the Rich Eisen Show. We're just getting started here on this busy program. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 